What's up, Zox fam? We're back with some more dislike. Now, I want to get into era-changing espers. And I really feel like this is important to kind of talk about because I think that this is really key to evolving your character compositions and even just how you go about building your characters when they're paired up with certain types of espers. Now, I want to dive a little bit more into what I mean by era changing espers and really one in particular, uh, Lu Shang, right? So this unit is currently at the recording of this video up on banner. And I think it's really important to emphasize this type of value. What is this kind of value doing to the game? And how can we, you know, look out for these types of units? And are these going to be must grabs or high, you know, investment units or etc, right? Now, I will say first things first, Lu Shang, from what I've been able to see, is a super, 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 super low investment character. Um, and I would even argue that this character is able to do what it needs to do um, out the box, right? So all I would say is level 60 in doing your ascensions, this character is going to give you value, right? Now, of course, you want to have some decent gear on him, you know, make him usable, but at least for what he's doing, I want to jump right into his kit again, just to kind of, you know, reiterate some of those things for those of you guys that are not familiar with what he does, but the S1, he's able to silence, does damage um, based off of attack, but silences for one turn. Um, then, of course, the S3, we're going to get into the passive in a second, uh, Might and Grace. So, basically, you have up to um, the chance of um, basically silencing at 100% chance um, once you get this to level 3. Um, and then the duration can go up to... Um, uh, three turns, right? So it can last for up to three turns and then it can be cooled down, down to five turns, right? Um, so it's uh, up to 100% chance of inflicting silence on all enemies for one turn and then grants all allies three stacks of safeguard. And what safeguard does is when inflicted with a debuff other than inca incapacitated, consumes one stack of safeguard to ignore this debuff, max three stacks, right? Now, the thing about this is that <laughs> what he's doing is he's basically making it to where if you're doing things like, for example, like we're going to show in Kronos, you're doing things like Kronos, you're doing, um, you know, other wave clearing oriented content. He's making it to where the opponents are only able to hit you with their basic ability, which means that if they have an ability that normally would nuke you or stun you or freeze you or sleep you, they can't do that. Right. Um, and considering that he has two abilities that will, you know, silence, he's basically able to reinforce that. Right. Right, which is really nice but that's not even the most important thing in this kit the strategic insight is probably going to be what i would call an era changing uh ability right and these are the types of abilities that i would say that sometimes kind of get you know implemented into the game people might overlook them for a little bit and then out of nowhere it's like wait this unit allows you to do this so this unit is going to really be opening up compositions and here's why right so it says at the start of a round um and when lu shang revives right so this is just one factor to this ability uh it casts this ability if there are any surviving uh, allies other than himself so he gains enlightenment, or gains enlightenment, grants his allies uh, accentuated, uh, and when he um, when he falls, removes all uh, stacks of accentuated from his allies at the start of uh, the accentuated carrier's turn. Which again, uh, what this does um, is it basically is going to be giving a effect based off of the esper's type. Um, so the following is as, as such: fighters increase attack and damage throughout combat and up to a limited amount. Uh, defenders increases defense and um, reduces the damage taken throughout combat up. To to a limited amount supports increases speed throughout combat and up to a limited amount all ability cooldowns minus one turn and controller increases speed throughout combat up to a limited amount uh inflicting ability effects won't miss and can't be resisted right so why is this important so the thing about this is that this is going to be a character that can enable your characters to continue to do something that they do but allowing you to be able to shift your gear into other aspects of you know like their kit right so like say there's a character that you kind of want to build one way or the other right um and normally that would be the case right so like uh let's see if we can find somebody that has a crap ton of accuracy right um so let me see let's say let's take for example like is my ollie no i don't have him on his accuracy build right now i'm trying to think who i have on a high accuracy build i know there's a couple of characters that you kind of want um, but I think I would probably just use my my uh, T, for example, right? So T, normally, you would want um, to have a good amount of accuracy up until a certain amount of resos. But let's just say, for example, we're talking about T, right? Um, and the big thing with T is usually where her S2, she has that stun speed down, right? Um, the absorption of AP is kind of its own thing, right? But the thing about his kit is that he's going to make it to where no matter what, 
her stun and speed down cannot be resisted. So if you were running, say, a higher value of accuracy for you to be able to land that, you now can run a lot lower value in accuracy and you could say maybe go for more bulk, right? Or you can now push for more damage or you can now push for, um, you know, other values, right? So this is something that you can kind of now do when you're looking at these types of characters. And this is, again, going to be, like I said, the evolution of how you can start compiling your teams. And these are going to be these different variations that you're going to start seeing and that's going to pop up within the game, right? Now, of course, with something like this, you're already going to be seeing this with like, for example, Hilda, right? So Hilda, I would argue again with her, you still kind of want the accuracy there for her because that is going to be a thing that allows her to scale. I think it's in her S3. Um, yeah, so at the start of combat for each 10% of accuracy she has, she gets 10% base defense. So you kind of still want the accuracy on her. So I don't think she's the best example, but if I didn't run any accuracy, she's still going to run or still going to be able to land her defense down, her poison effects, no matter what, right? Um, and that's considering that now when you're talking about having zero like zero zero value on your uh accuracy and things of that nature that's going to be completely different than you know her having even the 20 to 30 or 40 percent because that means you might have a chance versus just zero right which again with a character like lu shang he's going to be allowing her to land that no matter what now of course the other thing too is passive which again is really important is supports, right? So speed is increased throughout combat up to a limited amount and the ability cooldowns minus one turn. So that's kind of insane because that's making it to where like, for example, if you were using sets like Ocean, right? Ocean set. That's a that's like probably one of my favorite sets in the game just because it allows certain characters to get to doing their abilities quicker. Um, you can now say put them on another set and you're still going to be getting that value of that minus ability cooldown. Now, again, this is going to vary according to if you're running them with this character, but just kind of thinking about again composition, you know, potential here. That's something that's going to be very vast and something that you want to pay attention to, right? So let's actually see real quick. Let's see if we can get a blitz done. All right, so this is about 50 something turns. So I want to kind of just like show that value, right? So at least in this, right, they're always going to be hitting these. Like poisons, always going to be getting hit. And it's kind of funny because he definitely, I think, needs more accuracy for sure because he's getting resistant here. Um, but it's crazy that he he can get resistant if he doesn't have the proper accuracy, but he makes it to where his teammates don't have to deal with that. So it's just kind of funny to me, but I guess that is kind of a way to kind of like, you know, kind of balance him out. Cause if he gave himself a hundred percent, then that means that you could not have to focus on accuracy. And then he just kind of does what he needs to do. So I definitely need to throw uh, some more accuracy on him. and He'll probably be straight. Um, but yeah, just basically making it to where these characters, for example, like I said, the, especially focusing, honing in on like Hilda for the most part here, she's going to be able to do, do what she needs to do then leon um is going to allow her to be able to rotate her abilities much qu uh, quicker she's going to actually be able to move faster um and then again what he's doing is he's just basically making it to where the team is able to flow a lot more seamlessly so that's kind of the crazy thing about you know this composition right and then like again this is it's just not a losing team, right? It's just going to work just because, again, I have the proper sustain. I got two fighters, um, so the damage is there. So their damage is, I mean, they're hitting harder progressively. Um, and so it's a lot of value that this one character is giving to your entire team, right? So this is even going to be great for those that are, like, trying to push up further, getting into, like, maybe something like Kronos 20 or even just trying to create a more consistent team. Um, he's actually, to some degree, in certain ways, ways lowering some stat requirements um but he's also making it again like i said much more easier uh for you to be able to run your teams right and the crazy thing is again this is him without skill ups this is um without any resos so as soon as he gets those resos as soon as he gets those skill ups he's going to be a completely different monster <laughs> right like we haven't even touched on his resos yet which after this run we'll touch on that right now again i can actually run this a lot quicker but this is just the point of just like showing like hey this unit can do these things for your entire team and it's high value right like this is a lot of value um and again this is like considering that at one point you know the game was highly emphasizing that if you didn't have dupes it was going to be painful right like it's, it was going to be really rough to get your units to operate the way that you needed them to and i think that's kind of not necessarily a pain thing i, I kind of feel like that's kind of what can happen with some units and it's just going to be the case but we're kind of seeing that with like the new meta Ling. like he needs dupes in order for him to be able to operate properly um 
to, I would say, be able to get those proper stacks, etc. Right. So, again, when you kind of look at the statistics here, you would think Lushong is doing nothing here. <laughs> like you would think he's doing absolutely nothing, but he's basically enabling the entire party, right? Like, so it was kind of crazy that he's just there, but that one thing can make or break that entire team comps run, right? So again, really, really nice. And I think my fastest I did with that team comp specifically was like 46 turns. So again, if um, I think that first wave prior to, if he would have landed all that stuff, um, that, uh, he would have silenced the uh, the two ads. They would have just been deleted, right? So again, when you're starting to like look at those different values, these are the kinds of things that you're going to get. And then when you start looking at resos, right? Because the resos kind of get um, a little, a little kind of, a little kind of crazy, right? So then, for example, here you got the new strategic uh, insight, which casting strategic insight grants all allies three sacks of safeguard now. <laughs> like that's just like okay um then of course when you go to here when attack with a critical hit damage is minus 15 percent. so you already have some innate like um i would say mitigation against people that will try to probably uh nuke him and so that's already kind of like a huge w and then the last one for the r6 so he gets another new strategic insight so when lushang falls his allies gain a bonus turn so just even down to the investment, and that's why I wanted to talk about the resos real quick lastly, just even down to the investment of this character, when you're talking about like doing the ripple op boxes or doing the, you know, the other boxes uh, for shards or even your guild content for shards, like this is a character that just has so much value long term. Um, there's going to be it's going to be really hard to knock a character like this out of meta. That is why certain characters, in my opinion, are still valuable, like the Gabbies, the Sallies. Uh, you know, you're going back to your year one characters um, that, and I would even argue early access characters, that still hold a lot of value. And this is what I mean by, like, supports like this usually typically have like longevity within these types of games because they're doing something that's not necessarily enabling themselves, but it's enabling other characters. So again, I definitely would say guys, whole point of this, make sure that you pay attention and look out for these types of like units within the game. Because again, a lot of the times you might not realize the game is actually evolving in a way that's allowing you to be able to open up or change or shift how you might be able to do things. But it might not be inherently as obvious as, hey, we're adding a new gear bonus set or we're adding this uh, for like awakenings. It might just simply be just how the character is able to operate or enable characters. So that's basically going to be that with this one, guys. Let me know what you guys think. I would say if anybody wanted my opinion, I definitely would say this is a character you at least want one copy of. I feel like he's like just way too good just in terms of the idea of one, what he actually can do, but also what he can possibly do in the future. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Everyone, stay blessed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.